In this video, we're going to talk about the process of artificial eutrophication. This is something that only affects aquatic ecosystems. Um, there is a natural component to it. There is a thing called natural eutrophication. So this does occur naturally, usually in our spring and summer times. Um, but when we have artificial eutrophication, what's happening is that actions that we as humans are doing on land um, are causing it to happen either more drastically or in areas where it normally wouldn't occur. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk through the steps of what actually happens with the artificial eutrophication, where does it come from, and then what are the overall impacts. So it comes from the overuse of fertilizers and detergents. And inside these fertilizers and detergents, we have excess phosphorus and nitrogen. Now, phosphorus and nitrogen are great nutrients that are used by plants in order to grow. So what happens is the phosphorus and nitrogen gets inside and, you know, the regular plants are using it as the fertilizer, but it also gets onto our land and then starts to move into our waterways through runoff. So ultimately what that occurs with all this additional nitrogen and phosphorus, it leads to those dead zones that we saw in the video that we watched right before Christmas break. So the first thing that happens is our excess nitrogen and phosphorus run off into our waterways uh, via the runoff. So as precipitation falls, it carries the nitrogen and phosphorus into our waterways. And what we see is, is that at first, nitrogen and phosphorus are really good for that body of water because there's algae, there's aquatic plants and everything that's located inside this body of water. So they use this nitrogen and phosphorus, especially algae, and it's almost like a feast for them. And they're able to keep reproducing and reproducing and reproducing because they have all these nutrients that are available to them. So when there's a lot of sunlight, these algae start to reproduce. And eventually what happens is you start getting this really like kind of greasy green film that starts to appear over top of the water. Now, what actually makes this worse is when the water sits still. So this happens a lot in ponds and it happens also a lot in like lakes where there's not a lot of water movement. So the water's kind of stagnant. Well, the algae start to populate and eventually overpopulate. So you actually get layers of this algae. So what you're seeing here in this picture, you're seeing some of the algae on the top, and then there's actually algae underneath it as well. Now, the good part about this is, is that it starts to place oxygen into the water because the algae, their byproduct is going to be oxygen. So the oxygen content of that water is going to start to rise just slightly. However, now what's going to happen is because the algae overpopulates, the sunlight that was normally reaching the bottom of the, the water there and it getting all the aquatic plants now is prohibited from going through. So the algae that's on the lower part of that film, as well as any aquatic plants that are inside the water, are now not getting sunlight. So they can't do photosynthesis. So what happens is the only ones that are reproducing are the algae that's sitting on the top of that water. Well, since the ones that are underneath and they can't do photosynthesis, they can't create energy, so therefore they start to die out. Well, when they start to die out, the decomposers, which are basically bacteria, will start to decompose them. And they start doing the process of cellular respiration. Well, if you remember, in order for cellular, cellular respiration to occur, they need oxygen. So these bacteria start using some of that oxygen that's in that water and start removing some of that oxygen in order to break down those dead material. Well, since there's so much dead material, what now occurs is that you get a rate of oxygen removal. So that oxygen starts to come out of that water because the, the bacteria is using it up. So what happens to that water content is that the dissolved oxygen level starts to drop more and more and more. So it ends up becoming what's known as hypoxic, and that's that word right here in number seven. It means that it has a low oxygen content. Well, just like we saw in thermal pollution the other day, is that it puts a stress on the things that are living there because now their biological oxygen demand is not being met. So therefore, these organisms start to struggle and some of them will also die. So most of your fish and your small organisms that are inside this, this water. Well, now that they've died, it promotes even more food for the decomposition. So those bacteria and things that are inside that water now even have more things to break down. So they start to munch it all up. And since the bacteria don't have a way of going, yeah, this isn't really great because we're using oxygen and they need such little oxygen, they basically just devour this stuff up and they end up using more and more oxygen for cellular respiration. Well, since no more new oxygen is, is being put into the water because the plants are not reproducing that are inside that water because they're now dead, 
the oxygen level continues to drop down lower and lower and lower and lower. Well, eventually what happens inside the water is it becomes anoxic. So when it becomes anoxic, and that's this word right here in number nine, it means all the oxygen has been removed or nearly all the oxygen has been removed. It's been lowered down to such a level that nothing can no longer live in that water. And this is where we end up with our dead zone. So like what we saw in the video is that some of our dead zones that were located um, you know, I think it was the Gulf of Mexico. There's one located in the Chesapeake Bay. A lot of that stuff, we were looking at the chicken farms, that runoff that was going off into that water was high in nitrogen and phosphorus. So that high nitrogen and phosphorus was promoting the growth of the algae. Now, the biggest thing with the um, artificial eutrophication, and one of the things that most people get wrong is when they say, well, what actually caused it? What's removing the oxygen? A lot of people are going to say the algae. It is not the algae. It is the bacteria that's doing the cellular respiration part that's eating the dead plant material, the dead animal material in there, that's using up whatever oxygen's in there and overusing the oxygen and eventually removes it from that body of water.